In this example, we are asked to compute the path integral of f dot dr, where f is given by this vector field, 1 plus xy quantity times e to the xy in the first component, and the second component is x squared e to the xy. And the path is given by this parametric function, or the vector function, cosine t comma 2 sine t, and the interval is just 0 to 2 pi, or sorry, 0 to pi over 2. Um, and we are asked to do this by showing that the vector field is conservative and then using the fundamental theorem of path integrals. And even if we weren't told to do it that way, we might guess that this would be a good idea because you can just think about trying to plug into the definition here, um, computing dr, dotting it with this vector field, and then also you have to plug in the component functions of r into the x and y of the vector field if you're going to use the definition. So it's always a good idea to check and see is this vector field conservative and for a vector field in two-dimensional space it's not that hard to check um, that it's conservative or not. So remember the component functions of our vector field are called p and q and to check if a vector field is conservative we have to compute dq dx and dp dy and then take their difference, right? And so if their difference is zero, then our vector field is conservative. Well, let's start with dq dx. This is going to be a product rule. So dq dx gives us 2x e to the xy uh, plus x squared y e to the xy. That's the x derivative of q. And then we need to take the uh, y derivative of p. So the y derivative of p is also a product rule it is going to give us what though? So the y derivative of p will give us, so I'm going to in my mind multiply this out, maybe it's not good to do things in your mind. So p I'm going to write is e to the xy plus xy e to the xy. Um, the first term is then just a chain rule and the second term is the product rule. So when we take this derivative, the chain, uh, chain rule on this term, remember we're taking the y derivative, is going to give us an x e to the xy and then we take the product rule on this one um, with respect to y. So that's going to be plus x e to the xy plus um, it's going to be what? x squared y e to the xy. And you do the chain rule on the second term. Okay? And when we take these, the difference of these two, we see, okay, this is as we had hoped. These two uh, portions cancel, right? They're the same. These two portions cancel, everything's gone, and so we find that this difference is indeed zero. And so that means that our vector field is conservative. All right, well, why do we care about conservative vector fields? Well, the fundamental theorem of path integrals tells us that it's easy to compute, or we are allowed to use it to compute um, the integral of a gradient, and if our vector field is conservative, then that means we can find a function for which uh, it is the, the gradient of that function is, is this vector field. Okay, and so that means that we need to try to undo these derivatives that you would get from the gradient. So df dx would equal 1 plus xy e to the xy. We need to integrate out the x component to try to re recover our gradient function. And this is going to require us to do integration by parts on this one. Okay, and so when we integrate this by parts, we can make a little table here. So we'll do our u, 1 plus xy. The derivative of this with respect to x is just y. Derivative of that is 0. Right, remember everything here is happening with respect to x. And then what we integrate, the dv, is e to the xy. Integral of this with respect to x is 1 over y e to the xy and then 1 over y squared e to the xy. And of course, when you do integration by parts by the table method, you just kind of go through here and you end up with um, what? 1 over y plus x. This is all times e to the xy. And then this is going to be minus 1 over y, e to the xy. These two cancel. And we get x, e to the xy. But there is potential here that we have missed some function that might depend only on y. All right, so this is a candidate for our f, x times e to the xy 
plus c1 of xy, potentially uh, unknown function that depends only on y. All right, we now need to do the same thing for the uh, q function here, the y component of the vector field, but this one gets integrated with respect to y because the y component of the gradient is the f dy. Right, so this function is x squared e to the xy, but this one gets integrated, as I said, with respect to y. And integrating this with respect to y is much easier, actually. It doesn't require integration by parts because there's no y's in the first component. Uh, it just gives us x e to the xy, again, plus potentially, what would be our c2 now, unknown function with respect to just plain x. And then let's remember that from our previous work, so this was our work on the y component, from our work on the x component, we got e to the xy plus c1 of y. And remember, when you are asked to find a potential function, you only need one potential function. You don't have to find all of them. Remember, there are infinitely many. But we've got everything we need right here, because these unknown constants aren't going to contribute, right? And so we can say, all right, well, these constants would truly just be constants, because the x and the y's, we've got everything we need. And so our potential function for this vector field is just x e to the x, y. All right? So now how are we going to use it, right? We've got, you know, this means, by the way, that our, our vector field f is equal to the gradient of this vector field. Well, yeah, how are we going to use it? We want to apply the fundamental theorem of path integrals, which says that we only have to plug in the boundary points of, uh, of our curve, right? And so this is the next step, is to find the boundary points, and then those are the only two points that we have to plug in to our gradient vector field here, or our, our potential function, to evaluate the integral. So what we need then is we need to know r of pi over 2. This is going to be our point b, right, the end point of our, of our curve. And so this is just going to be cosine of pi over 2 and 2 times sine of pi over 2. And so this is the point 0, 2. All right, cosine pi over 2 is 0, sine of pi over 2 is 1. We need to know the starting point. That's r of 0. This is our point a, right? When we plug this in, we have cosine of 0, 2 times sine of 0. And so this is the point 1, 0. All right, and so our integral, c, f dot dr, it turns out to be, it is just this function, x, e to the x, y, plug in lower bound the point one zero upper bound the point zero two and see what happens right on this upper bound when x is zero we get zero on the lower bound when x is one and y is zero we get one and so our integral is just negative one so all of the work in this problem is finding the potential function verifying that the vector field is conservative finding the potential function um, and then from there uh, applying the fundamental theorem is a breeze and that's kind of the idea, right?